Okay, real talk, this is what I get for eating chocolate before filming. Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be the long-awaited Goodreads reading challenge wrap-up. So basically, last year slash in the beginning of the year, I decided to give myself a challenge trying to read as many winners and runner-ups on the Goodreads Choice Award that happens every year. Basically every year, Goodreads make people vote on their favorite slash most popular choice best book for 21 different categories. So I chose 17 of them. Basically I skipped things like cookbooks. And then I tried to read as many possible winners and runner ups so I can do my own personal wrap up at the end of the year because I do have some opinions and I know some of you too about how some of the winners are chosen. You're gonna notice that in some categories, for example, some books should not be in there, which is kind of why a lot of us have some gripes. With that said, uh, I have done that for months now and I am ready to finally share with you uh, each books that I've read in each category, just talk about them, letting you know my opinion, and then letting you know which one should have been the winner in my opinion. <laughs> I would like to specify that Emily will not be voting because she didn't read anything. For anyone that doesn't know why I have a snow globe with my face in it, I'll explain in the comment section. It's a long story, trust me. So we're just gonna jump right into it because there are going to be two videos because like I said, 17 categories. It's gonna be a long award show. So the first category, best fiction. The winner was Still Me by Jojo Moyes. Uh, we're not off to a good start because I did mention beginning of the year which one I was thinking of reading and this one I had decided to skip it because first off it's book three in a series. Second of all, I had watched a movie and hated it so I didn't want to torture myself purposely so I had chosen to read book two, The Runner Up, which wasn't too far behind. An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. I have actually read three books in this category. I also read Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty and then An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, which I would like to note that these two books are not really fiction. Uh, Lion Moriarty definitely should have been in the mystery thriller category and then the one by Hank Green definitely should have been in the sci-fi section, which is why I, th th that's what I'm talking about of like who does this list because we need to talk, we need to exchange words here, but we're still gonna go ahead and talk about them anyway. So let's talk about the only book that should have been in that category that I have read, An American Marriage. This book is about two newlyweds, two black Americans that are trying to make it in life during the 21st century. And uh, a big injustice happens. Basically the husband is accused of something that he did not do. And it's basically the team of the book, them struggling in their uh, marriage because of it, uh, struggling to find justice, loyalty. And it's a very tough read because honestly, I have a love-hate relationship with a lot of those like literary fiction type of books because they tend to just be really heartbreaking and more like a slice of life type of books, which aren't usually my main thing, but I still tend to read them once in a while, especially the popular ones, because once in a while, one of them really, really uh, get to me and I adore it. Unfortunately, this one was kind of a math for me. I personally didn't really connect with it, but uh, I kind of understand why it was popular. The reviews t tend to be kind of like hit and miss, but I definitely did get quite attached to the main female character and I can kind of see why people liked it, but it's just not necessarily my jam. Personally, I ended up giving it three stars and I did listen to it as an audiobook. You're gonna notice it's a team. Just because newer books, I tend to use my library for them and the audiobook, audiobook waiting list is definitely shorter, so it's gonna be a thing here. But yeah, uh, not a bad book, just not necessarily my thing. Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. Like I had mentioned, this should have been in the mystery thriller category. Uh, uh, you are actually also going to see it in my worst books of the year, spoiler alert, because it was shit. I don't say that often, I do not say that lightly, but it was actually bad. Um, I had read by her Big Little Lies and I ended up actually really liking it a little bit to my surprise because I'm not usually someone that reads about or enjoy reading about, you know, moms and kids and everything. Uh, but that was really good and I was really excited to read more by her and this was so not good. As much as in her other books, all the characters are super likable, this one was totally the opposite. I'm not even sure if it was supposed to be that way, but I could not stand 
any of them. And I really hated how she would bash certain characters. Like for example, there's a character in there that is a, is she an Instagrammer and she got plastic surgery and maybe I'm sensitive to that stuff because I have a beauty channel, I'll admit it. Uh, but she kept just bashing her nonstop every time she would show up and it's like, okay, we get it. Like you judge her, like move on. And uh, the twist midpoint is when I actually put the book down, which I don't do that often either. But I got just so mad because it was just so ridiculous and not good. And I mean, at this point, you just have to test it, try it if you are interested, but this was just bad. So not only should it not be in this category, but I really didn't enjoy it. So <laughs> we already know it's not the winner here. Now, the last book in this category, an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. Uh, this, like I said, is a YA sci-fi, which again, shouldn't be in this category. With that said, this was amazing. Uh, you're actually going to see this in my most surprising list of the year because I didn't expect this to be that great. Obviously it was written by a YouTuber, which can be hit and miss or mostly miss, I find. Uh, but this was really, really great. I love uh, first contact with aliens type of books and this is definitely one of them. Basically the main character is a superstar on YouTube overnight because she does a video one morning very early. She finds this statue in New York and she decides to do a silly video for YouTube and it explodes because this is literally the first time people see this alien thing and then things can ensue. I enjoyed the fact that the main character is actually not likable, which I find that this isn't something you see often enough in YA books, possibly because a lot of people tend to struggle with following characters they don't love, but uh, I appreciated how for once it's on purpose. Because <laughs> sometimes I find that the character you're supposed to root for them and I am not rooting for them, but yes. Uh, it was really interesting. I thought that the YouTuber aspects were actually well done, which again, the writer is a YouTuber, so it makes sense, but I feel like I have read some of them, which made me cringe because I'm like, this is so not how this works. Uh, but yeah, surprisingly, a very interesting Interesting. I definitely recommend it if you're someone that wants to get into sci-fi, which I did do a video about like Bigger's Guide to Sci-Fi. I'll link that down below. But uh, yeah, this was great, but shouldn't be in this category. So I'm kind of left not knowing which one I should choose as a winner because again, there's only one I really read that should have been in here. So if we don't care about the label, this would be the winner. If we do, then it kind of has to be an American marriage. So I guess I didn't do uh, as much progress in that list as I expected to do because I feel like the other ones definitely seem to be more like classic, you know, literally fiction, contemporary books that deserve to be in that category, but I just didn't have enough time to get two more of them. So second category, damn, that was long. I need to like accelerate my stuff. So best mystery thrillers, which is definitely one of those categories where I have read a ton, let me count. Eight books, not bad. Uh, I, that's one of the things I had mentioned recently whenever they announced a nomination for this year. Uh, a lot of people vote and that's fine. There's no rules um, that, you know, you're voting and you've read one book if that, uh, as the winner. And I find that it's kind of hard to, you know, take seriously the winners because of that. With that said, eight is not bad. I feel like I can kind of give you an idea which ones were worth it, at least to me or not. So let's get to them. The first one was The Outsider by Stephen King, which was the winner. Um, that was actually a really, really good first half of the book. <laughs> Let me start by saying that if you haven't read the uh, Mr. Mercedes trilogy beforehand, uh, you have to because there are some major spoilers towards the end, so don't do that to yourself. But it starts really interestingly, uh, basically kidnapping and murder of a young kid. Basically everything points to this amazing men and like nobody can really believe that he did that and you're just really left confused and in uh, its defense I didn't realize there would be some fantasy elements which I understand Stephen King I should have known but it started so solid and then it went really weird and it kind of just didn't end really well which is a team with Stephen King we all agree about this uh, but yeah the first half was really, really solid. The second half I felt was a lot weaker, but it still ended up being like a 3.5 for me. So not a bad book. Will it be the winner in my heart though? Let's look at the other ones. The runner up was The Woman in the Window. I read this book and full disclaimer, I like to do disclaimers because at the end of the day, nobody is actually objective. <laughs> it's a review, right? But I like to be upfront about these things. And I felt like I read this book being very, very tired of certain tropes like, you know, coma and in this case, 
unreliable main character, especially a female one that is an alcoholic. I just feel like kind of fed up about this thing, especially if there's like women, girl, whatever in a title. It's just, I kind of got enough of those domestic thrillers, I think that's what you're calling them. I just find that it's kind of an easy, cheap way to make the main character unreliable. Uh, with that side, I do understand why the character was in her case. Like she has a whole reasoning and it made sense. I did feel like, I enjoyed the feelings in the beginning of like, she's at home, you know, she's spying on people uh, through the windows. And I definitely felt like drinking and I don't even drink. So uh, that was done okay, I guess. With that said, um, I didn't really care for the twist. I saw it coming like way, way in advance and it just left me quite indifferent. I haven't seen the movie, is it out yet? Uh, but I definitely will. But yeah, it was kind of one of those books where everyone is raving about it and I was like, Meh, it was okay. You're actually gonna notice that it's a team for a lot of these books and that's kind of why I've been quite disappointed about mystery thrillers last year. A lot of these I had read last year, uh, but there will still be a winner. <laughs> so the third book that I read was The Wife Between Us. And it's one of those books that once again, I didn't feel like it was that memorable. Again, unreliable, alcoholic main character. And there's the word wife in the title. <laughs> I did actually listen to it as an audiobook and I do feel like it was the reason I was able to finish it. But uh, I think it's definitely a bit me that I'm just very tired of reading about, you know, a wife obsessed with a replacement and uh, again, alcoholic, non-reliable. And I feel like it's just so common now that it's kind of a little bit boring. So for me, it just wasn't something that I can even go in details at this point because I feel like I forgot most of it because again, not very memorable. It's not usually something I have issues with, although you might notice a pattern in this video because a lot of these were kind of meh. But yeah, it was kind of a meh book for me. <laughs> I do want to mention though that I didn't see all the twists coming, but uh, yeah, throughout this year, I definitely noticed that I'm not really into uh, domestic thrillers. Quickly wanted to mention one book that I did not finish, but there's a reason. Uh, there, then she was gone by Alicia Jewell. Um, I could not get into it. I really didn't care for the romance-ish, I guess. And again, domestic thriller. I did actually get this from my library. And again, when it got returned, I didn't care enough to get it back. And I kind of just forgot about it. But I'm mentioning it because I did try to read another book by the author like last month and I still could not finish it. It just rub rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know why, how, but I am just not going to read more by the author, but you know, it's here, so might as well mention it. The next one is something I finally have something positive to say about. Um, the Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I believe at this point I have read three or four books by her and her strong points are definitely um, the atmospheric feelings that you get whenever you read her books. It's definitely like creepy, dark houses usually. And she definitely gives you that like kind of gothic feel. Interesting premise actually. Uh, basically the main character receives a letter letting her know that she is on the list to get a lot of money from uh, inheritance. That's the word I was looking for. And uh, she realizes that it's probably not for her, but she really needs money. So she decides to go and then things get dark and mysterious. And I didn't love the ending, but overall I think it was a pretty good book. Uh, if you're just looking for, you know, a new fun mystery thriller to read, it's an interesting one. I would recommend it. Not a favorite, but, but definitely uh, worth a shot if you really love those and you've read something else by her, for example, and you want to give a second one a shot. <sighs> Different book, another unreliable female character. Sometimes I Lie by Alice uh, Feeney. Um, this book gave me literally Whip whiplash, is that the word in English? <laughs> like, you know when a book tries to give you so many twists because they wanna be like, ha ha, that 10th one you did not see coming. And you're like, obviously at this point, this is becoming so ridiculous that like it obviously no one can see it coming. You know what I mean? Uh, I kinda got that feel with that one, with that side. Uh, you're following a woman who was in a coma, shocking. She is a mom, shocking. And she's unreliable. In its defense, I did feel like the premise, you know, how they were selling it to you was good. You know, she's telling her name and she's like, three things you need to know about me. One, I'm in a coma. Two, my husband doesn't love me anymore. And three, sometimes I lie. And I'm gonna just say it, it seems intriguing. I did like the idea of starting to read it. But yeah, like I said, things just got too much quite fast. In the beginning, you see the twist comings and then you're just like, Really, <laughs> this is where this is going, really. Uh, but if you like a book with a bunch of twists, you're probably gonna enjoy this. I feel like most of the reviews are really positive, but then some people really, really hated it too. So not necessarily 
a reliable review, I guess. Next one is something I really, really enjoyed. Finally. Uh, it was not an unreliable main character. <laughs> uh, the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This took me by surprise so much last year when I read it. I actually bought a new our hardcover edition of this, which I had heard nothing of this book either. That never happens. I buy most of my books used or I use my library. And I fell in love with this book so hard because the premise is just genius. Let me try to explain it because man, is it complicated. Basically, you are really, really thrown into a story. The first hundred pages will be a little bit confusing because of it. The main character has eight days to figure out a murder. So think murder mystery with a sci-fi twist to it because the character has to relive the same day over and over again. And every day he is stuck in a different body. So he has to, he doesn't know who his other bodies are. He doesn't know who's trying to help him or not help him. And things get very confusing, very interesting. I think the weakness of the book was probably the ending, but it was still really, really good. Uh, an amazing book that I definitely recommend if you like those thrillers, mystery thrillers with a sci-fi twist to them, which I love them. They're some of my favorites. And this was great. I can't say much more because it's so easy to spoil it, but I totally recommend you check it out if you you are intrigued because so good. Quickly, I also read The Broken Girls by Simone St. James, and this was a classic, you know, mystery thriller murder. Uh, there's a back and forth between the 50s and then present-ish time. So it's almost a little bit historical fiction at the same time. So you're following girls who are sent to a kind of school for like bad children. And uh, one of them disappears and then you go to present time where there's also a young girl who disappears on the premises. And then you're basically trying to figure out back to back uh, who did it type of thing. Uh, it does benefit from knowing very little. There are some like almost a little bit fantasy elements in there, but not fully. I'm actually kind of surprised that it wasn't higher on the list maybe you know, it wasn't really uh, discovered until later, but that one I would definitely recommend checking it out. It was good. Not a, the winner for me because there was better ones, but still a fairly solid one. Uh, another one that kind of shocks me that it wasn't higher, but it's probably because again, it came out during the summer, so less time for people to read it. But I really, really enjoy that one. Uh, the Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Not an alcoholic, not a wife. <laughs> I actually highly recommend you check that book during the summer because it happens in a summer camp. Once again, there is a back and forth in time. You're following the main character. And when she was younger, she was at that summer camp and uh, her friends disappeared and nobody was able to ever figure out what happened to them. And the camp was closed and it actually reopens and she's invited to go once again and things start being weird all over again and she's trying to piece things together. Who did it? Is it the son of the owner? Is it the owner? Is it her? Who did it? I actually have read all three books by the author this year and this was by far my favorite one. I definitely recommend that one. So finally, damn, that was long. Uh, I read so many books in this category and if I had to choose a winner, uh, I think I would have to go with The Seven and a Half Deaths. I feel like it's probably the least traditional mystery thriller but I think it's my favorite one and second place would have to be The Last Time I Lied. So if you're looking for new recommendations, these should have been the winners in my heart. <laughs> Third category, historical fiction. Out of the 20 books, I have finished three. I started a fourth one, but we're not gonna talk about it. So three books, actually the number one, two, three, so not bad. Uh, the winner was The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna, which, damn. Basically, you're following the story of a teenage girl and she has an abusive family, basically her dad is very abusive, and uh, they leave and go live in Alaska. So basically attacked by the environment, attacked by her own dad. Things get ugly very, very fast. And it's one of those stories where you feel like things keep just bunching them in character and you're just like enough and things keep getting worse and getting worse and getting worse. And it almost become a bit too much, to be honest. I did enjoy it overall, but I felt like once again, towards the end, it kept starting to be just a little too much. But overall, a fairly enjoyable uh, historical fiction. It's not usually my main genre, but I did think it was interesting. The second one was The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Ether Morris. There's been a lot of controversy since about the book, basically uh, the author taking a lot of liberties 
and it's definitely more fiction than historical. Uh, essentially, you're following the love story between uh, two characters in Auschwitz, basically uh, the tattooist, you know, falling in love with the female character. And uh, it just made no sense how free he was to walk around and things just felt very, very unrealistic to a point where it was offensive. And uh, yeah, it kind of just ruined the book. Also, my main issue was with the writing style, which I understood afterwards. It was technically written to be a script for a movie and it read that way, basically felt like a 12 year old wrote it. And I'm not even someone that's usually difficult with the writing style. I don't mind, uh, you know, if it's not super flowery or something, but it just was pretty terrible. I really did not enjoy it. And uh, again, it was criticized heavily since. So not the winner for me. I did actually really enjoy The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. It's a very different type of historical fiction with like a hint of like, kind of like sci-fi fantasy elements. Basically you're following four siblings who uh, go and visit a, how to call it? Psychic, that was the word I was looking for. Uh, and she predicts their exact date of death when they were children. So they kind of have to live their lives knowing whenever they are going to die and it's kind of affecting them. And you just basically see their whole lives of all of them one by one and how they will die and everything. I have to say, I much, much prefer uh, the story of the first one or two kids. Uh, and then it kind of became weaker and weaker towards the end. I felt like overall the ending was the weakest point. Uh, I still think it's an interesting premise. I tend to read books for premises quite often. So if that's also something you are into, I would recommend checking it out. And I did think that overall it was a fairly good book. Uh, it seems like the reviews are pretty, you know, extreme. You either love it or hate it. But I thought it was actually quite interesting and very different. It almost felt a bit like if you enjoy literally fiction with a little bit of a twist, you might actually enjoy that one. Now, uh, choosing a favorite is kind of difficult because as you noticed, uh, none of these are something that I was like, oh my God, best book ever. Um, it's really difficult. <laughs> I think I would kind of have to go with Dear Moralist just because of the first two siblings. But I think most people would probably prefer The Grey Alone over that one. So take it with a grain of salt as all of my reviews. <laughs> Fourth category is fantasy. One of my favorite categories, hands down. I have read only five books in this category. That is kind of shocking. Uh, to be honest though, there are more that I do want to read. I uh, also, I feel like it's because, you know, those, those are all the books that came out in 2018. And uh, a lot of these are part of series that I have not started yet or I'm not up to date. So I guess it makes sense. So. Let's go one by one through them. The winner was Circe by Madeline Miller, which in my brain, I don't know why, I always want to put uh, mythology with historical fiction, which I know they're not, but in my head, that's how it is. Anyway, this is a uh, retelling of Circe. And if you love retelling, you need to read this. Actually, you need to listen to this as an audiobook because the narrator, her voice, she could like read my freaking grocery list and I would just be there wanting more. Uh, just really great. I really enjoyed how she flipped the script and now Cersei is actually a witch, a feminist, and it was just super interesting, very calming actually to listen to as an audiobook. I highly recommend it. I completely understand why it won by a lot. Uh, but that one I had actually already read. So this year I had to read the runner up, which, uh, can't believe I did that to myself. I read The Shape of Water, which is technically a script for the movie, and y'all freaking cheated. And by that, I mean that there was like 10 times the amount of votes than people that actually had reviewed the book. So basically people saw a movie and voted on that one, which is why a lot of us complain about this being like a popularity contest, because that's just not how this is supposed to work. You're supposed to have read the book. Again, doesn't matter, we're here anyway, I read it. I hated it. Not fully true. I did enjoy the main female character. The beginning of the book was interesting. Uh, she is actually deaf and uh, she's working basically cleaning lady in a facility where she meets this <laughs> Aquaman. That's basically how, it's, how I've been describing it because it's so freaking ridiculous. I am not a fan of what I call magical realism. It's not truly magical realism. I just find that sometimes when the fantasy elements tend to become kind of 
fake and magical and like all in one with the nature and just big weird i just can't deal i don't know why it just makes me cringe especially when you jam a love story in there like they can't freaking even talk to each other but they're so in love and they'll become one and i just cannot deal and i hated it and i forced myself to listen to it because I am sticking to my challenge and I did it and I didn't even watch the movie even though I said I would because I could not make myself do that twice. So yeah, I really didn't care for it, uh, but I did it. <laughs> We're all gonna be shocked that it's not the winner. Next, I had read The Puppy War and this is a really interesting, it was actually debut author uh, fantasy series. The first part of the book is actually in a school setting, magical school, which if you wanna make me read a book, do that. And uh, yeah, I did feel like the first part of the book was definitely the most solid. Uh, keep in mind trigger warnings for absolutely everything you can think of because yeah, it happens. The whole country is at war, so obviously a lot of horrible stuff happens, but I adore the uh, magical system. I really enjoyed the characters. They were really interesting. And I felt like the main female character was <laughs> not like other girls, uh, but <laughs> but not in the traditional way. I really wanted to rave about it. They actually made it to uh, my best books of last year, because again, I read it last year. And I definitely think it was worth getting this amount of votes. And a lot of people have been actually loving and reading uh, this one and the next book that came out this year. And I approve, they're great. I also read Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shannon McGuire, which this is the third book in the We Were Children series. And after reading it, I told myself I wasn't going to read more because I kept being disappointed. I actually liked the first book. There was like kind of a mystery thriller in there too. And it was great uh, because you're following children that go to uh, through doors to those magical world. Think uh, Narnia, for example. And uh, the worlds are really interesting, but I kept being disappointed because there wasn't enough in there. And in this one, you do get more of the world, but it just didn't really like stand out to me. Uh, spoiler alert, the fourth one completely changed my mind. So you might want to read that one. You actually can read it just like that. But yeah, that book was just okay. Uh, it just didn't really became, you know, a favorite for me. It was kind of just a meh quick read. She has really uh, great writing style. So just for that, I would read it. But again, just read the fourth one instead. And then the last one I read, which I'm really disappointed because there were so many more that I really wanted to read in that category. But the fourth one and the winner, because might as well just say it. Uh, Grey Sister, Mark Lawrence. Hells yeah. Uh, if you have not read the Ancestor trilogy, you need to. The first book being Red Sister, and it's just... Um, book two was great. I enjoyed that it's kind of a fantasy with a uh, post-apocalyptic world, and the magic system is really amazing. Um, the characters are great. Basically, uh, the young girl is sent to a nunnery slash school where she will learn to fight, she will learn magic from badass magical nuns. Like, who doesn't want to read this? I really enjoyed how there were so many strong female characters. I enjoyed how, for once, they can have muscle. <laughs> Mind blown. Uh, and then <laughs> I really enjoyed their relationship between all of them. The fact that uh, they're actually complex, interesting, uh, whether they're friends or enemies. And the magic system, once again, the world building, super interesting. Basically a device in this guide that made it possible for the planet to stay warm is becoming kind of weaker and weaker. and the available, <laughs> the available space is becoming smaller and smaller because ice is just uh, coming closer and closer. So obviously it will create a bunch of wars. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. It's just amazing. Love it, five stars. You need to read this series. By far one of the best book series that I have read in a long time. So you need to read this. Oh, feels good to finally rave about something. I feel like so many of these books I was kind of eh about. So uh, fifth category, which was the best of the best. Essentially, they made people vote on the best ones out of all of the winners in the past. And out of the 20 books, I have read 10. I kind of always want to say one more, which I'll talk about quickly because I want to laugh at myself. With that said, 10 books to talk about, so let's get to it. The winner was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, which is a YA contemporary, really not my usual jam. Uh, I did read it because obviously the hype, I completely understand the hype. Uh, for me, it wasn't something I fully, uh, connected to, related to, not really expecting it, obviously, but uh, I'm very happy it did come out the end that it did become so big because a lot of people were finally able to connect to characters. So uh, I understand why it was the winner. Personally, uh, I don't think it's going to be the one I choose because some of these definitely I connected with more, which 
I mean, at the end of the day, my readings are always based on my own enjoyment, which, you know, this is how it is. Uh, the one that I was reading this year because I had already read The Hate You Give was All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, which is uh, historical fiction. It was the winner in a past year. And I ended up listening to it mostly as an audiobook because it was recommended to me to do that. And I do kind of agree. I feel like the writing style was really pretty and I felt like it was easier to go through it that way. Uh, I also agree with a lot of people that were saying that out of the two uh, stories, you're following a young blind French girl and a young, uh, I think he's German, <laughs> I can't remember, but at least he's part of the like uh, German side during World War II. And uh, I did much prefer following the young girl. With that said, uh, overall a great story. I understand the hype. I didn't really care for the ending though, but it was overall a solid story that you enjoyed going through, not just for, you know, the punch at the end type of thing. So yeah, pretty good. The one in third position was A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. I feel like people lose their shit on the internet over this book, especially on Goodreads. I feel like that's kind of why a lot of people say that, you know, why books always end up winning on there. Am I blushing? I hated the first book, but I actually really liked the second book, mostly because it was such a step up from the first one. But this was probably part of the Y fantasy category, although it's technically new adult, but really that means it's YA with sex. The sex scenes were ridiculous. I'm not someone that enjoys reading sex scenes or romance really, but uh, despite that, I did uh, find that it actually felt like a proper fantasy book, which the first one didn't really feel that way. I really enjoyed the friendship between uh, a certain group of the characters. I did feel like the end day was kind of convenient. I really hate when characters need to all be matched up together. It's just so ridiculous. Life doesn't work that way. Uh, but yes, uh, interesting world, interesting twist in that one. Uh, and it was worth reading, but yeah, won't be the winner. <laughs> The fourth book was The Help by Catherine Stockett. Uh, I know there's some controversy on this uh, book. Uh, however, I did enjoy it. I also have watched a movie, which is great because Emma Stone really, and actually not just her, so many great actresses in there, which I actually looked at it again and I realized how so many of those actresses are like much more known now. And I'm so glad because they were amazing. Anyway, uh, interesting book, uh, historical fiction, uh, in the South during the 60s in Mississippi. And I feel like we kind of all know everything about it at this point. I did enjoy it, even though I know some people have issues with it. Uh, then I have also read The Martian by Andy Weir, one of my all time favorite sci-fi books. I feel like this is very accessible if you are someone that wants to start reading, uh, but you don't know what to pick up because everything bores you. This is great. I thought it was actually funny. I did enjoy the movie despite not even liking Matt Damon, which I know everyone freaks out when I say that. I don't know why, it's just how it is. But uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Just skip this other book because it was not good. So I don't know, this could probably be the winner. Uh, let's check, oh, Gone Girl, didn't read it, but I keep wanting to say I did because I watched a movie. I am that person apparently. Uh, I did read, however, The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is the only book by Neil Gaiman that I finished, is it? For some reason, you know when I said magical realism, <laughs> this is kind of how I feel about this one. The magic system is so vague and you're all one with the nature. It just gets too much for me. Uh, I did enjoy the beginning though, but uh, it's not gonna be the winner. I'm just gonna stop here. Uh, Catching Fire by Susan Collins. <laughs> really? <laughs> like I was kind of shocked that it was in there, but not Hunger Games, but I guess people really prefer that one. It's solid. I know so many people love to, love to bash why books just for the sake of it because young girls love it and you get it. I think it was pretty solid. I did have some issues with it, but it was enjoyable. Just, just let it be. And I'm so excited for uh, the new book coming up about that badass old woman, which I can't remember her name, but I am living for that book. I will be reading it as soon as it's out. So that was great. Probably not the winner for me though. Um, another one that was in there that I have read was Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. If you enjoy literary fiction and you enjoy slice of life, I find that there's always kind of a mystery in her book. And uh, again, you're just following your family really. And I find her writing kind of relaxing to me. And I understand the hype, even though it's not usually my thing, but it was good. I understand why it was part of this uh, list. <laughs> Red Rising by Pierce Brown. <sighs> Uh, this is what I tend to describe as Hunger Games on Mars. <laughs> I really did not care for the beginning because 
boy decides to overtake everything because girls dies because obviously there's always a need for a female character to die for a guy to do something. I had issues with the book, not gonna lie. I have yet to pick up the next one and it's been three years. I need to get over that and actually continue because it is so loved. Also a mix of kind of Game of Thrones, I felt like whenever you get to the good stuff. Uh, but yeah, it just wasn't something I really connected to. But if you like, again, Hunger Games, Game of Thrones, it's definitely something to check out because it is really well loved. And uh, the last book that I have read in this category was A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas, which is book three after the other one I mentioned earlier. Uh, kind of felt very, very flat. Uh, it felt actually, in its defense, I thought it was a trilogy and turns out there's gonna be way more books. So uh, definitely didn't get that conclusion I thought I was going to get. It really suffered of middle book of series syndrome. Nothing happens. Literally nothing happens. I didn't care for it. And uh, some characters, you know, go on a side quest and they only come back at the end and you're like, oh, finally you're back. And I just really didn't care. And uh, I decided afterwards to not continue reading the series, even though I did enjoy the second one. So that kind of just says it all. So I have to choose a winner. Well, I guess I have to choose The Martian, which I feel like is not very interesting because we all know so much about it now, but it's the winner for me. Next category is romance. Uh, I mentioned earlier, not a romance person, but I decided for the sake of entertainment and kind of just, you know, in the spirit of getting out of my comfort zone to uh, try and attempt to read the winner, which was The Kiss Quotion. And I... <laughs> uh, um, I moved last month and I had a lot of painting and unpacking to do and I thought, you know what, just get the audiobook. You can go through this book while doing that stuff. I was wrong, very, very wrong, it's by me. Um, the first time I tried to listen to it, I didn't even finish the first chapter, which is about 45 minutes and I listened to my books at 1.5, so it was like 30 minutes and I couldn't even manage to do this. A lot of people really like the book because you're following a character who uh, is on the spectrum, so obviously representation is always great. I don't think that was my issue with it, it's just that because it's a romance book, there was so many awkward physical description and it just made me cringe. I obviously read more than the first chapter, uh, but I eventually just put it down. I was like, you know what, no, point in like torturing myself or anything. I don't think I will do this category next year. It was just, you know, first year, try some stuff. Uh, it will depend because it depends on which one is the winner because I know everyone raved about that red, white, blue, whatever, royal <laughs> romantic book, which I might try, we'll see. But yeah, uh, I I'm just, Let's pretend that never happened. So this is gonna be part one of my award show. I hope you enjoyed it, even though I feel like there were a lot of hit and miss in this uh, first part. Overall though, I did uh, find some really great books in here that I hope you will check out. As always, please feel free to leave a comment in the in the comment section uh, to just let me know how you felt personally about these books because obviously those are just my reviews and I would love to hear yours. Thumbs up, subscribe because you definitely don't want to miss part two. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And again, subscribe because my end of the year series is coming and you definitely don't want to miss that. So I'll see you in my next one. Bye.